Well, hello and welcome back. Our topic tonight is inverses of linear functions. Now, recall that we've talked about inverses, and that notation is f inverse. And we're going to do something a little different tonight. So take a notes and have a great time. Functions have inverses if and only if they are 1 to 1. Now, what did that mean? We talked about that last week. Remember, a one-to-one -one function has to pass both the vertical line test and horizontal line test. All right, it has to pass both. Exercise one. On the grid below, the linear function y equals 2x minus 4 is graphed along with the line y equals x. So part A, how quickly can you tell that y equals 2x minus 4 is a one-to-one -one function? Well, one-to-one's got to be the key there. And remember, when you see one-to-one, -one, it needs to pass the horizontal line test and the vertical line test. It's got to pass both. So let's quickly take a look. Here's my vertical line. As I swing it across, I think it's only hitting once, so I would definitely say it passes the vertical line test. And again, I'm strictly just looking at this line, 2x minus 4. Again, looking at just the line 2x minus 4, let me take my horizontal line test. And does that pass? Does this line only hit that line once? I would say definitely yes. So, I would say I could tell rather quickly. I'm just looking to see if I pass the horizontal and vertical line test. Part B, graph the inverse on the same grid. Recall this is easily done just by switching the x and y. And that symbol for inverse, remember, is f inverse. So I'm just going to take the points I have and flip them. And you do the same in your notebook. So this point 2, 0 becomes 0, 2. Just flipping my x and y. 3, 2 becomes 2, 3. And hopefully yours looks like mine. And I'm just going to label this f inverse. Part C. What could be said about the graphs of y equals 2x minus 4 and its inverse with respect to the line y equals x? Well, remember, any function and its inverse are, hopefully you've said it, reflections over that line y equals x. Now, part B, find the equation of the inverse in y equals mx plus b form. So remember, you just need a slope and a y-intercept. All right, I think the y-intercept's easy. You just look at that y-axis, and I would say it has a y-intercept of 2. Now we need a slope. Remember that slope is your rise over run. And as I go from point to point, red point to red point, I'm going to rise 1, run 2. Rise positive 1, run positive 2. So I'm going to say I have a slope of 1 half. So as I put that together, I'm just saying y equals 1 half x plus 2. And this is the equation of the inverse. All right, so here's our big rule. We don't want to have to sit there and graph every problem and reflect it over that line y equals x. So there's a quicker way. And let's box this in and start. Here's how we're going to do it 99% of the time. To find an inverse, switch the x and y and solve for y. Okay, so it's that simple. To find an inverse, switch the x and y and solve for y. So let's try example two. Which of the following represent the inverse of this equation? So because I saw inverse, I'm going to rewrite my problem, y equals 5x minus 20, and I'm going to follow the rule for inverse. Switch the x and y. So the x becomes y and the y becomes x. All right, you're halfway done. Now you have to get y by itself. You are always solving for y. All right, so basic solving equations here. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add 20 to both sides. Okay, now x and 20 aren't like terms, so I'm just going to write down x plus 20 equals 5y. Now the second part, I just divide everybody I see by 5. Now just be careful, you have to divide every term. So that term, this term, and this term. So as I clean it up, um, now remember there's a magic 1 right in front of all those variables. So I'm going to say that's a 1 fifth with an x plus 20 divided by 5 is 4, equals y. And as I look at my choices, let's see, I had a positive 1 fifth, so that guy's out, and a plus 4, so I'm going to go with choice 4. But it's that simple. Switch the x and y, and carefully solve for y. 
Exercise three, which of the following represents the inverse of this function? So again, copy it down. Y equals two thirds X plus eight. Now inverse means switch the X and Y. So X's become Y's, Y's become X's. And your goal is to solve for Y. Now they start to look a little uglier because we're gonna deal with fractions this year, but don't let that scare you. Uh, we're just gonna fight through it, it's not that bad. So my first step is I'm gonna subtract eight from both sides. So I've got x minus 8 equals 2 over 3y. Now, to get this y by itself, I have to get rid of this 2 thirds. So what we do when you have a fraction is you multiply by the reciprocal. The reciprocal, maybe we'll put a note in our book there, multiply by the reciprocal. The reciprocal of 2 over 3 is just 3 over 2. Now why does that cancel? Well, on top you get 6, and on the bottom you get 6, and those divide into 1. Now remember, just make sure you do it to every term. So I have to do 3 over 2 to this guy, and 3 over 2 to this term. Now watch how easy it is to clean up. This just remains 3 over 2x, then you have a minus sign, okay? Now I'm going to put this 8 as a fraction, so I'm just going to put it over 1. And when I multiply, I just multiply the tops and the bottoms. 8 times 3 is 24. 2 divided by 1 is just 2. I'm sorry, 2 times 1 is 2. So as I clean this up, I get y equals 3 halves x minus, that turns into a 12. And there you have it. There's my inverse. y equals 3 halves x minus 12. So I'm going with choice 2. All right, example 4. Same idea. This time it says, what is the y-intercept of the inverse? Well, you first have to find the inverse, of course, before you can even answer that question. Let's see if you can do it on your own. All right, why don't you pause it and see if you get the same inverse that I do. If you don't, obviously go through and check your work. I'm assuming these first three steps are pretty easy. Now, if you're stuck on the fraction part, let me say it again. You're just going to multiply by the reciprocal. The reciprocal of three-fifths is five-thirds. And that goes to every term. So this guy gets a 5 thirds, and this guy gets a 5 thirds. Okay, these cancel, because that's 15 over 15. Um, this just becomes 5 thirds with an x. And again, I'm going to put this 9 over 1, and you just multiply the tops together and the bottoms. On top, I get 45. On the bottom, I get 3. So as I clean this equation up, I get y equals 5 thirds x plus 15. And now just answer the question. What is the y-intercept? Well, remember, the number with the x is your slope. This number by itself is the y-intercept. So I'm going to say positive 15. Exercise 5. Which would be the equation of the inverse of this function? So same idea. Just switch the x and y and solve for y. Now, you'll notice that none of these equations up here are solved for y. So this might take a few extra steps. But the first step's the same. Oops, and I already missed my y. Let me go back. This should be y minus 2. All right, so I'm going to get x plus 6 equals 4y minus 8. And I'm going to add that 8 over, so I get x plus 14 equals 4y, and then I'm going to divide both sides by 4. Now remember, every term gets divided by 4. So just watch this term carefully. Remember, in front of that x, there is a 1. So this is actually 1 fourth with the x plus 14 fourths, which I'm going to divide by 2 and get 17 halves equals y. Now, like I said, none of those answers look like this, even though I know I have the right answer. Let's use a little common sense. If I were to go through, notice my slope is 1 fourth x. So if I were to distribute this, would any of those give me a 1 fourth with the x? Well, I would say these two are definitely out. Those give me a negative 4x. This one gives me a positive 1 fourth x, and this one gives me a negative 1 fourth x. So if I had to take a guess, I'm going to guess 1, but I'll work it off on the side just to show that we're the same thing. Okay, so once I think I've got my answer, I'm just going to verify it and distribute this 1 fourth. So I've got y minus 2 equals 1 fourth x 
plus 6 fourths. And all I have to do is add that 2 over. So I get y equals 1 fourth x plus 6 fourths plus 2. And you can easily add, use your calculator, add those together. I get 1 fourth x plus 7 halves, which in fact is the same thing. Number six, which of the following points lies on the graph of the inverse? So there's that magic word again, inverse. So I'm switching my x and y, just like we did, and solving for y. All right, so why don't you pause it, see if you get the same inverse. And hopefully your inverse matches with mine. Now, once you have that, I'm just going to take my points and plug them in. So let me take example one. That was the point 8, negative 2. I'm just going to substitute this in for x and this in for y and see if they come out. So I'm going to use my calculator. I'm going to say that's 1 fifth, parenthesis 8, times 8, minus 18 over 5. And do I get out negative 2? And again, I'm just using my calculator. Um, just be careful on your calculator that your fractions are in parentheses or that you use the fraction tool. And in fact, I do on my calculator, I get a negative 2, which tells me I've already found my correct answer. But notice I found the inverse and then plugged the points in. Alright, example 7, last question of the night. Which of the following linear functions would not have an inverse that's also a function? Well, anytime it asks me if the inverse has a function, what has to jump in my head? I've got to pass that horizontal line test. That's how I know if my inverse has a function. Now, maybe you don't know what all these look like. Certainly you could graph them with your calculator, um, but hopefully you do know what most of them look like. Let's take 1. y equals x. Okay, that's the point 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, etc. Okay, does this pass the vertical line test? I would say yes. Does it pass the horizontal line test? I would say yes again. So I know this function has an inverse. Let's try example 2 y equals 2. So I go to the y-axis, I go to 2, and I draw a nice line. y equals 2. And again, you can graph these on your calculator if you don't know what they look like. All right, does it pass the vertical line test? All right, can I draw a vertical line and it only hits once? Absolutely. How about the horizontal line test? What happens when you draw a horizontal line? I would say it hits at every single point possible. Therefore, it fails the horizontal line test, and this guy does not have an inverse. Well, that's it for tonight. Remember, inverse is switch the x and y and solve for y. We'll see you tomorrow.